Welcome back fellow Cybertronian enthusiasts. Today we have for you X-Trans Bots Aegis, uh, defensive strategist. I picked this up while in Austin, Texas on vacation, went and visited Toy Dojo in person, and if I must say that place is awesome. This is another figure that I don't believe was on their website, but I happened to find in person, and I am very thankful that I did. I grabbed the last one of him as well. Uh, let's see. Packaging's pretty standard for X-Trans Bots, lots of great artwork. Um, on the back, they have a nice little bio. Um, I really enjoy their bios. They put a lot of thought and humor into them, which I do enjoy. Don't mind the dog hair. So, uh, but yeah, I'm pretty sure you can take one of those red lenses and put over here and see the statistics, but it's also not hard to follow the statistics on that. Um, but yeah, fun little touches and quite enjoyable, uh, creative design. So, um, I've also already been into this, uh, been through it one time, uh, I was on vacation and really just could not wait, I think y'all can relate. So inside the box of fun, he comes in a blister pack and he has baggie full of goodies and, uh, which I have not opened the baggie full of goodies. You get instructions with a card, um, I have not opened these yet. So, and I probably never will. For the goodie bag, you have some uh, terrain accessories. You have a stump with um, like cups and a coffee pot on it. You have a log that's fallen over. You have uh, what looks to be a rock. And then you have um, attachments. I believe these attachments are for um, his hands to put on his gun component. His gun component splits in pieces to fold up and transform. Um, he's got side view mirrors that will attach. He's got different face sculpts. He's got a totally different head. Um, he's got his G1 toy head, which is really neat. Um, he's got a satellite dish and he's got his force field emitter, I guess is what that is. I don't know. I'd have to get into the instructions and check but sometimes half the fun is the discovery so i'm not going to take these out just yet um you know i might elaborate later on on the um head and how all this stuff attaches but we'll see how long this video gets i'm trying to keep them short and sweet but x transbots makes it hard with all this stuff so I'm just gonna scoot that to this side here figure comes in its blister pack it is not taped um, so it just easily comes off and they were kind enough to wrap it in this nice plastic baggie which I actually put back put it back in and I'm just gonna take them out and put them there put that in put that in and give myself some space to work so this is his tune version, I believe. Tune color to accuracy, whatever. Um, it's a little bit more gray. And it might just be the color of my walls and the light that I'm using. It has a very lavender look to it. Um, but I don't mind it. One of the things I've noticed in uh, which I watch other reviews and stuff from time to time. And um, I will say that their paint applications and decals that they put on... Um, are really consistent and not as sloppy as the original version so it has turbo four-wheel drive on this side i kind of wish it had it on this side as well but it does not um that is not going to make or break my feelings any i like the blue translucent plastic i know you can see the bits inside and he's got a bit of a peekaboo face going on right there i think you can probably spin the head and put it where it needs to go um that was probably just on me. So, um, he's got translucent plastic up here for the turn signals instead of it being painted. Translucent plastic for the headlights instead of just being silver painted. Chrome grill, and it's got turbo sculpt in there. Really, really looks good. Looks like the Toyota Hilux uh, from the 80s, um, which is one of my big, big things I like about Trailbreaker. I wish they had continued the translucent plastic on the back rather than it being painted. But what can you do? They even painted the the um, latch for the lift gate for the um, camper shell. 
So, uh, he's got pizza cutter wheels, really skinny, skinny wheels, uh, but that has probably more to do with the transformation. They are rubber wheels. To me, a masterpiece really isn't masterpiece unless it has rubber wheels. And I'm looking at you, Hasbro. Uh, quit selling me shit without rubber wheels and telling me it's a masterpiece. Um, anyway, uh, translucent plastic, that's painted. Kind of wish that was translucent, but it's horseshoes and hand grenades at this point. And uh, from the underside, this piece kind of wobbles down. I'm not a fan of that, but... Um, it's just a pin. I could probably tighten that up, but the, the vibration from the wheels alone kind of moving around and, uh, yeah, that's, that's it from underneath. Pretty tidy. Um, so let's, uh, let's do a quick size comparison. Here he is with X Transbots Boost and, uh, Boost is quite small comparatively. Um, he should be at least as long as the truck, if not longer. I've, I've had several Trans Ams over the years, and I'm pretty sure it's bigger. So uh, I know height-wise it should be more up to about there. Um, so yeah, Boost is kind of a small figure, but that's mainly due to how small he is as a robot. A um, little bit more size comparison here. Here he is with Fans Toys. Ooh, I uh, got some dust on there. Ignore that. Um, Fans Toys Magnum. Uh, Magnum is way too big um, to scale. I mean, granted, they're about the same length in this, and it's not totally bad, but Magnum is clearly too big for this part. Um, he's too high and too long and too wide um, to be what I consider in the MP scale line that X Transbots goes for. And I feel like X Transbots fits MP scale Hasbro better. Um, but that's just my opinion. So we're going to scoot him on back out the way. So let's get him transformed. I believe the first step is to pop this loose back here. And it's a little intimidating because you feel like you're going to break the plastic. But the key is to get this thing popped off. Just like that. And after a couple of times, I imagine it's going to loosen up because the first time it was way harder than that and it scared the crap out of me. I was afraid I was going to bust something. Now, the camper shell is actually tabbed under here. And it may be a little easier to break loose some of these other connections and just kind of wiggle it. And like these windows pop loose. And let's see. Bear with me. I'm trying not to break my figure here. There we go. There goes one side. And when the one side lets go, that those buggers are in there. You kind of have to squeeze in and pull out is what I should have done. So squeeze them in and then lift it back. And then all this comes back. Let's go ahead and flip these little panels out. And... Be gentle with these when they fold in. Um, these have been known to break at that screw joint. So just be mindful of that. We're just going to fold those in. Just so that we don't accidentally bump it and break it during transformation. We don't need any accidents here today. So we're just going to lift all this up and out of the way. And that will give us access to our legs. And let's see. We're going to separate the legs like so and rotate down 90 degrees and let's see we got a little hip flap there and let's see I believe this piece here folds over yep 180 degrees and tabs in on this side and there should be like this whole piece lifts up and rotates out on this little hinge. Yes, and then the leg can be extended the rest of the way. All right, with the leg extended, we have the 
the foot, the toes fold out from underneath. And now we got to get all this back in here. And this is tricky. I fought this for a while. And um, this tab's got to slide past here. And it's all got to gotta kind of have to collapse down because then the tailgate rotates down over its placement here. And it's really tricky. And I think I ended up just taking the leap of shove and forcing it. So bear with me as I try not to break this figure. Hold on, there's a piece that needs to come out. I totally didn't, I forgot all about this. This piece rotates up on this hinge. Uh, that's why it was fighting me so much. And it needs to slide out. There we go. Get my fingers down in there. So that slides out. And that's actually going to cover over the wheel. So let's try this. Okay, um, and it does not want to go, and I know it goes. I did it, I've done it. This is just a booger part. Huh? It's got to collapse down and then this has to rotate in. There's just no room for it to rotate in and it doesn't exactly oh, Maybe There it is. I was forcing it way too hard. So we'll leave that up then this You want to bend that to 90 and then that folds over oh, Hit the camera and then that covers down. So that's nice and clean. Let's do it again. One more time. Just kind of lift that up and flex around. This should untab. There we go. Now it's untabbed. Now, this will. Slide out. It's supposed to. There it goes. Really just a booger of a spot. Oh. There we go. Now then. Rotate that, rotate that. This goes all the way over. That goes there. We need to dig this out. that 90 degrees or just get it kind of ready in that area now that folds down that folds over that folds in <laughs> good lord and that just sets there and then this covers down i will note that this one goes in nice and tight this one is a little loosey-goosey and it's probably just a pin that i can set so now we have the legs sorted. 
let's get on to the upper body and I believe that pop the tires loose slide the arms down try to slide the arms down think let's see let's turn it can we oh Butt flap, got to flip the butt flap down. This little doodad right there. Let's rotate it 90 degrees, maybe. I've got to get this past all this up here, but I don't know. And I don't want to break nothing. So I'm going to take my time and fiddle with it until I figure it out. So bear with me. Oop, oop, now we're getting somewhere. Had to lift up on the hood. And that releases that. And that. Ooh, look at that. Boy, arms get way out the way now. I believe now we can rotate the hood down. And the whole torso up. Look at that. Now we're cooking with Crisco. Alright. That piece goes up. I don't know if y'all can see it. That piece goes up there. This piece comes out and around and up. And then his head is tucked in right here. The head will rotate up on this joint right there, right through. Spin it around. There's our dude. All right. Now, back here, I believe these wheels just tuck in and then let's see we're going to sort these arms real quick I think we got a storm rolling in lights are flickering rotate arm up y'all can't see that so the arm should rotate down like so and tab into place. And let's see. Slide that out. There's your elbow. Hand folds out. And then this flips over. This flips out. Like so. And then that covers the hand. Like that. And rotate the hand. And there we go. There's one side. I'm going to rotate the arm that way up. Then grab that and spin that there. Extend the arm. 90 degree bend. Rotate at the bicep. Flip the hand out. Open that panel up and flip it back in and then rotate the hand. All right, so now we've got it this far. Now we got to sort the back. Pretty sure this all just collapses back down and then I believe under here you got these peg holes here and I believe 
those go to so you got this peg hole right here and then you've got this peg right there can you see that yeah, there you go let me get my finger out of the way that peg there will tab into that hole is the plan so you kind of have to finagle this double hinge however best it's going to go looks like it's going to have to rotate up a little the tailgate the lift gate will actually tab into that groove there and that's going to keep it keep its torso from flopping forward like I've been doing and then let's see if I can get this off camera here I don't know how well y'all can see it let me move the light let's see it's hard for me to even see but that piece is supposed to tab in. Wrong turn. There it goes. Got to tab in there. So now let's get that other side tabbed in. And voila. Now, you have here, your windows are pressed against here and here. And you can kind of move them, but when you move them, you're moving your windows inside here. And you want to kind of um, keep from having stress on those. So you kind of want them straight up and down. So, but, whew. Whoop. <laughs> Just pop that out. Pop it back in. Rotate the arms back down. And there we go. And these can sit further back so they're not like in your face. Alright, and we have Trailbreaker. Now, something I noticed with Trailbreaker is he doesn't really have a gun. He's got the attachments that become his gun. So, um, which I'm okay with. I don't recall him ever having a gun anyway. So, but there we are. Scoot them back so you can see them. It's light. Back up. All right, so we're going to go over the figure real quick. Um, this looks like white plastic, but it has a pearlescent to it, so I'm pretty sure it's painted. Uh, it is hinged to go all the way back and all the way forward. And those pieces just sit there like that. Same with this. Uh, same paint techniques. Um, this does rotate um, and you can take it off if need be um, but yeah then you have you have some up you have a little bit of down like and of course you have your swivel all the way around his head is mounted just like it was on Toro's where he's got a a, a T-swivel right there and then it's just hinged up and down. It does, it's not on a ball joint. So, which I think is nice because it keeps the head stiff. And uh, I'm, I'm not really worried about loose joints in the future. Now, shoulder joints are weird because you can get them full 360. But there's some conflict with components as you do so. Um, so you'll just kind of have to move and adjust things out of the way as needed. These tabs do not stay in very well so you can and will bump them and they will come loose but it's not the end of the world I mean once you get them posed how you like you just have it right back in and your your gravy let me see did not get that tagged in all the way like I should have alright I think I'm good now so um so yeah, it does come untabbed a little bit in, in the backpack area as you're manipulating them, but it's not horrible. Uh, arms, um, 
you get out to 90 degrees and then bicep swivel will go all the way around um, he gets just shy of 90 degrees on his bicep though it looks like it would be double jointed it's not he just gets a 90 and uh, gets wrist swivel he gets a little angle down maybe a smidge up and he's got a uh, thumb joint and he's got base pin knuckle fingers with the index finger being um, separate from the rest but just you know slightly curled hands pretty pretty normal standard operating procedure for a lot of these other arms the same um, he does not have an ab crunch but he does have a waist swivel which is really nice um, and he can get full 360 the backpack does not impede the waist swivel the legs get all the way out and all the way back so he can get um, the full splits and he gets all the way down so and you can see how it's done these are just friction joints in here and with um, uh, friction joints in there so no ratchets anything like that uh, which doesn't bother me I don't he's not loose or anything so it's not like oh my god it's gonna suck um, he is does have thigh swivel which is in here on uh, it's hard to show but it's on that plastic insert in there and I pop it loose nope he just slid out of the little trough back there so okay so for the knees you have a hinge point there and it's got kind of like a forward tilt to it um, and then it, it's kind of got like a secondary hinge right there but then you have the main knee hinge here and it gets you well past 90 like that's almost 180 I'd say 140 150 so that's really good um, that's impressive range uh, let's see for the feet, he's got a toe tilt down, a little bit of toe tilt up, uh, and then he's got an ankle rocker in. So, all in all, very well articulated, very good looking figure. Uh, paint wise, uh, I think most of this is painted. I don't think, I think the plastic is painted. I don't, yeah, it's painted. All this is like clear blue. Um, which is crazy because that could have been blue too. Um, but all of it's painted this gray. This And it's got a purple tinge to it. I swear it's probably just the color of my room. I know I said it earlier, but it's got a little bit of purple tinge to it. Um, but uh, all of it's painted. Eyes are painted blue. Um, you can't see those, can you? Uh, forearms are painted. Um the uh all the hands everything's every inch of this is painted i believe uh, red paint for the knees uh silver and gray and this is him from the back and it's really clean figure really well done uh very happy with this purchase i waited to see what fans toys was going to do because i, I kind of picked the figures that fit um my my perception my visual um aesthetics that i like from the, the tv show and um when i saw what fans toys was about to release and uh how cartoon accurate it is i had to go back to to aegis and i'm glad i found um x transbots figure because to me the vehicle mode is second to none and uh it's a really well-built figure. There's a couple of things I don't like about it, like the typewriter fingers and um, the oddly, like it's got two hinges. It's got a ball joint for the thumb and then it's got a secondary hinge. And it doesn't work really, really well because of um, how the ball joint's set in there. Um, I, this one piece being a little looser than this one um, bothers me. 
and the leg transformation is a little fidgety and the way the backpack doesn't totally tab in all the way like it it comes untabbed by fidgeting that doesn't really do much for me um so i think those are the only negatives everything else uh very positive i wish i do wish it had a double jointed elbow um and a little bit more range in the shoulders but um it gets the job done so i want to look at a couple of these parts real quick um i'm going to take this out and we're going to take out one of those and it should be as simple as well i thought that pegged in there but it doesn't so do i know what i'm doing i think not so let's see that's something else that i forgot happened um one arm is secured in really well the other one the t t ball the t joint here slides right out and uh it doesn't hold in very well at all as you can see so i'm just going to manipulate this since it came off go ahead and let's see I'm trying to remember how the hand went in here hand goes like that that covers over this pegs in there I believe it's supposed to and then I thought this tabbed on it but it does not so I know this is the exact same molded piece as that up there Oh, I see what it's for. It's for this guy. This piece goes up here. And it sits on that somehow. Like It's not exactly what I would call a tight fit. It just kind of sits there. That would have been nice if it was a little bit tighter fit. Maybe it's something I'm doing wrong. I don't know. But then this pegs onto there. And voila. And it has that component. Again, I don't know what it's from, not sure what it does, but um, you can do it. I just don't know why I have two of these. I'll have to look and see why I've got two of these. So clearly they're supposed to be to go on there, but I thought for sure... It would have gone on here. Yeah, see that just falls off. That's not very well um, on there. So, um, but yeah, I think that's about it. I mean, the rest of these accessories, head head swaps and so forth. Um, I think I have to undo a screw in the back of the head to get that to work. This one's got ears that pop down. I think that one I could just slide on. Let's see. This is a G1 head. His G1 toy head. Yeah, it just slides right off. Let's slide that one on. And there you go. You have that. Can y'all see it? Yeah, there you go. And his ears collapse so he can, f so that head will transform. It will go in transformation. Um, so that'll end up working out. And then I can use a small screwdriver here and swap out its faces. All right, and we have uh, a screw on the back of the head to allow us to swap out faces. So let me just pop one of those out here. I'm just going to go ahead and take all this stuff out. So 
Sorry, y'all. One that does not want to come out. <laughs> and his satellite dish. I guess I should have tried to get this to peg in while he was in vehicle mode. But um, satellite dish just kind of like, I th think it pivots. Yeah, satellite dish pivots, but there's no real up or down. And it would peg in to um, this port right here. So it is supposed to go. It's a bit of a snug fit. There we go. And then you would just rotate that whichever way in vehicle mode. So, but yeah, there's that. And then for his head, a little bit of screw. Let's take that out. Take his face off. His visor is supposed to come out. Yeah, there we go. Try and do it so I don't scratch it. And so his faces, he has his stern look. And sad face. Kind of frowny. It is overjoyed face. And his, I can't believe you're asking me to lift your couch again face. So, let's go with happy face. Push his visor in and put that back in. Slip that in. And snug that down. I got him smiling. Slide that one off. Put this back on. There we go. That looks really happy. Let's see here. And get the. I don't think he's going to get that hero pose. He's got excellent articulation, but. Without an ab crunch, I don't think I'm going to get him all the way down. So, that's all right. It was worth a shot. Uh, so, yeah. That's Trailbreaker in a nutshell. Um, he's got all these other little accessories over here. I think there's a way to get him to sit on the log or on the stump or what have you. Just have them chilling. But, uh, there's a closer look there. You can see the coffee pot and the coffee cups for the humans, and the log and the rock. And then you've got his mirrors. The mirrors will actually go on the truck's doors right here. 
and they are a different color they do not match and they come really close to the side of the cab when in robot mode they rub right there so be careful when doing that I would probably rotate those down in robot mode so that you can get motion without hitting it the other thing I notice is the shoulder hits right there a little bit so you gotta be careful with that and that just has to do with wiggle of the plastic I'll put this one in real quick So yeah, that's um, X Transbots uh, Aegis, otherwise known as Trailbreaker, and uh, he's a great little figure. Pretty happy with it. He's going to look great in my collection. Ooh. And uh, glad I was able to locate one. So, uh, if you haven't picked one up, I encourage doing so. If you were able to find one. Uh, relatively inexpensive figure uh, compared to the rate of increase of other figures so um, very much feel like I got my money's worth out of it very happy with it and uh, thank you for watching and talk to you next time bye right quick I forgot to do a size comparison so we're going to splice this in somewhere forgive me but uh, I did forget to do a size comparison um, here he is with Hasbro's Bumblebee and Cliff Jumper, X Transbots Toro, and of course we have MMC's Meteor. So he's a little bit taller than Meteor. Um, he is a bigger bot, so but that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, I feel like he's supposed to be equal in size to any one of um, Megatron's henchmen so I think that works out quite nicely and uh, anyway that's that thank y'all for watching bye